Now we come to a key life stage where physical activity needs a lot more considerations, but also has the potential to do a lot of good and really change someone's life. I know I can change someone's life at any stage, but at this stage in particular, it could be the difference between spending the, the rest of your life in disease or spending the rest of your life and during these uncertain times, as people love to say, if you're worried about having a job into the future, let me tell you that working with older people is a great demographic that's not going to go anywhere. In fact, our population in Canada in particular, and, and in a lot of the developed parts of the world, our older population is increasing dramatically. Back in 1971, only like less than 5% of our population was over the age of 65. And they predict that by 2080, a quarter of our population will be over that age. Okay. So even in, so right now we're 2020, um, we're in kind of the 10 to 15% range of our population that is at that age. Okay. So this kind of graph does the same thing. So, so a lot of people aren't having a lot of children these days. Like a lot of people are electing not to have children. If they are having children, they're having like one, maybe two. You're like crazy if you have two kids these days. That's not true. But like it's it's a lot less common for people to have larger families. And our older people, they keep living. Not always in the best health necessarily, but, but that population, like we said, is going to keep increasing. And we have less younger people to take care of these older people. And this is something that we're really worried about as far as our healthcare capacity in Canada. But as a health promoter, if this again is a target group that you like, and I love this target group myself because they have such wisdom and they, they're like, they got these like, you know, they have these attitudes. Everyone's kind of got their own personality. They don't care about what anyone thinks anymore. Usually they're fun to work with. So if this is a population that you're interested in and you're worried about a secure job in the future. This is, this is a great choice. <laughs> as far as their recommendations for physical activity, they again do recommend at least 150 minutes of moderate to vigorous activity in bouts of 10 minutes or more. So similar to the 18 to 64 age group. They also again recommend those two days of resistance um, based exercises. And they also recommend that those with poor mobility uh, do start improving their amounts of physical activity to help increase their balance and prevent falls. Falls become such a big problem when we get older. One fall can change someone's life from completely independent to almost entirely dependent. It, a fall can potentially be life-changing and not in a good way. And that's why we really, the resistance exercise is so important in these older ages as well. So they can, they can keep that bone health and strength. We want those bones to be as less brittle as possible and those muscles to be as strong as possible. So they reduce the risk that they fall, A, and that if they fall, it's going to do less damage. However, as we get older, our capacity decreases and this becomes more and more pronounced over the age of 60, 65. Reaction time, resistance to disease, work capacity, recovery time, uh, just our capabilities in general, these all go down again, something to look forward to. Okay, And even in those individuals that have retained fitness their whole life, that are very fit, they still have a higher risk of disease than someone that is significantly younger than as well so we have to take all of these things into account okay so as far as exercise and aging there are tons of benefits that go beyond some of the benefits we talked about in module in the earlier module right exercise prevents bone law loss increases postures and all of this like i just said decreases the risk of falls okay um, mobility exercises improve flexibility and joint health if you've taken anatomy but even if you haven't you know about connective tissue and you know that like if you're taking anatomy and you learned like fascia if you saw fascia like you got to actually work on a rabbit you'll notice that with fascia like when it's thin you can just like you Put your hand through it and it like dissolves but when fascia that connective tissue starts building up on itself it becomes hard and that's one of the reasons why 
older people have a hard time moving and reaching for things because years of that connective tissue buildup has limited their range of motion. And that's why flexibility is so important, especially as we get older. Okay. Exercise also has a lot of psychological benefits, helps you feel young, stay, stay like looking young perhaps as well. Um, and like we said before, it doesn't slow the aging process, but it helps you maintain independence. It helps you maintain your quality of life and it just helps everything be easier. It helps you perform at a higher level. So like we said, things just get harder as you get older. However, those principles, those basic principles of exercise prescription, like progressive overload and the fit principle, all of these things are still um, important. However, we just need to be a little bit more cautious with falls, with decreased kind of uh, muscular strength and their increased risk for injury as well with these older ages. Okay, so again, you can you can read through this slide a little bit more yourself, but the kind of the main theme is that, yes, we want to still push, we want to push for progressive overload with older people, but we want to do so in a way where they're not going to hurt themselves, they are still going to enjoy themselves, and they're building up in a way that, that works for them. Okay, so again, things get harder, and you'll notice a kind of a what's kind of different than the slides on the 50s is that in your 60s it's kind of harder to retain that fitness it's possible but it's harder it gets harder and harder and harder okay reaction time goes down aerobic capacity goes down metabolism slows down so you're more likely to gain weight as well although appetite often goes down in these older ages as well and recovery time increases as well where people need more time to rest and all of these again need to be thought about when we're building this exercise program and again you'll see on you know on social media pictures of these older adults that look amazing that they're super fit and they've kept their capacity and we have examples in bbk as well of older individuals that are just like they look amazing and yes that's absolutely possible but often these are people that have had this relationship with exercise their entire lives and that have to work a lot harder that have to work for it especially more and more as they age Okay, and it says again, it would be difficult to retain your fitness from your 60s as the effect of aging accelerates in your 70s. Okay, so again, it's, it's important, fitness is still important, exercise is still important, but it's just going to become harder and harder with people as they age, and we have to take more considerations, and we're going to see bigger, bigger gaps between people's health in these later ages as well. Okay. So endurance exercise, we, we absolutely recommend this for older adults. However, we don't like obviously need to maybe push them as harder as maybe we would a younger adult. Um, elderly individuals require a VO2 max of about 20. So pushing that aerobic capacity in a gradual way, in a progressively overloading way that doesn't injure them. Those are some of the, the, the goals that we strive towards. Okay. So six months of endurance training that might be all it takes to make that significant difference in someone's life to a point where they are able to live independently again can you imagine giving someone that gift building their aerobic capacity building their muscular strength and endurance so they go from like barely being able to get off the couch to living independently and taking care of themselves Oh, <laughs> that's when the fun stuff of health promotion really kicks in, okay? So all these cardiorespiratory uh, improvements can be seen with endurance um, training, okay? This is an important slide to consider because it goes over some of the correlates of physical activity. So what kind of things are associated with higher amounts of physical activity in older adults? Getting back to that Active People, Active Places BC campaign we talked about before, remember that one of their key areas of focus is older adults and one of their key actions for this time well, a while ago time period was to focus on a program called choose to move so I want to highlight this program a little bit more okay so choose to move is part of a larger campaign called active aging BC and it's kind of a, a partnership between scholars uh, community stakeholders and government and again they have a lot of a community focus and part of their aim is to take the research and implement it 
Okay, so to take what we know about healthy aging and healthy physical activity in older age and implement that, okay, through uh, modes of delivery, including public education, community, sports, and rec. And like I said, part of Active Aging BC is this program, this campaign called Choose to Move. Okay, and it is supportive. It has that that, pol that um, public funds endorsement as well, political endorsement as well. So one of my favorite words on this slide is that it's a choice based, choice based. So it is individualized. These are individualized programs that are supported by activity coaches and that really focus on getting older individuals to move more but also helping older individuals to move more so they can help other older individuals to move more as well okay and it's delivered through a bunch of um non-government organizations like uh, bc rex and park the ymca and the united way as well okay so what they basically do they're kind of three main parts of this program are group meetings one-on-one -on -one action plan planning sessions and ongoing checklists Okay, and again, delivered through these pre-existing community um, infrastructures like uh, the BC Rex and Park and the YMCA. Okay, so they're trying to adapt kind of this, this other program, something called Active for Life, to this um, BC context. And then again, go into different communities. And let's say, let's say you're working with Surrey and you have more of a South Asian population, you're going to tailor that intervention more, more to that. Okay, at a particular gym that potentially has more of that population. Okay, so this is part of their promotional materials and this like to get people excited about the program. So work one on one with a trained activity coach to create a tailor made, amazing, physical activity plan to meet your health and fitness goals. You choose activities that you know you will enjoy and are able to do. So again, focused on enjoyment, focused on tailoring the program to the needs of that older adult. Because remember, in these older ages, we're going to see a big gap between those highly active people and those healthy people and less healthy individuals. So we want to tailor programs that take into account people, people's physical and mental capabilities as well. Okay, so it is uh, evidence-based. I like this. It's feasible and it's flexible. Flexible is important. Putting everyone in the same box and telling them all the same thing and trying to do give one intervention for all that rarely works because we're just essentially different as humans. Heterogeneity, one of the key concepts about humanity. <laughs> uh, there also why it works as well is that there is political investment too. Okay, and it's a social based program. Oh, I love that. Right. Where, where it's trying to build that community and build relationships. And these social connections often are so important for for keeping people in a program beyond just beyond just getting there that first day. I love this quote. I feel like I've got energy again, which is something I haven't had for a long time. Oh, can you imagine how that feels. Can you imagine someone telling you this, that because of something you helped do, they they have more energy for life that life is easier for them right it not only amazes me it amazes my husband he hasn't seen that in me for a long time and you know when i see that you know what i get from that like a sparkle Can you imagine returning the sparkle to someone's eyes what a gift that is something that health promoters get to do okay so key take takeaways is from a paper on the choose to move program authentic relationships with community-based partners are key to success <laughs> but take time common theme that keeps coming up okay communication across levels we want to break down these silos and build more bridges so we're sharing knowledge and working together recruitment is challenging and if you've ever done any kind of study that is something that's that's often the, the case. It's often easiest to get people that are already interested in exercise, exercising more. Enthusiastic and committed coaches are key to overall success. Like, obviously, you know, we, we feel other people's enthusiasm. We know when they're excited and that brings out excitement in us. Right. So if we are in, we have enthusiastic people leading us, that's something that's often going to make us want to keep participating in that program.